This video is about biochar. What is biochar, you might ask? The story starts a long time ago in what is now the Amazon rainforest of South America. It's only recently come to the attention of archaeologists that at one time this rainforest supported an extensive culture of millions of people that had roads, large cities, and particularly large farming operations. Their technique was so effective that farm fields that they laid down hundreds and maybe thousands of years ago are still fertile today. This is beyond the scope of modern agricultural science as it was known before these soils were discovered. We really did not believe there was an effective way to farm the Amazon. The key to the terra prieta soils of the Amazon is a material that science is today calling biochar. Basically it was a form of charcoal that was put back into the soil. The charcoal came from trees that probably existed on top of the earth at that point. And when they're put through the process of pyrolysis, which is the conversion of uh, wood or organic materials into char under low oxygen conditions, about 50% of the carbon is given off into the environment in the form of heat and CO2, but the other 50% is actually locked up in the charcoal. When the charcoal is applied to a farm field, it becomes stable for hundreds if not thousands of years under certain conditions. What this means to us today is that the charcoal can be added to farm fields around the planet, not only making marginal lands more agricultural so that we can feed more people, but it also means that biochar is a carbon negative material, not a carbon neutral, meaning that when you convert wood into charcoal, half of it goes off. Is heat and CO2, but the other half is locked up and when we put it into our soils that carbon remains stable in the earth, not only enhancing the productivity of the soils but removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And so it is a carbon negative footprint on the planet. Basically we could remove greenhouse gases from our Earth's atmosphere simply by using biochar on farm fields across the globe. How does the biochar work? In short, charcoal has an enormous amount of surface area in the pores that are left inside once the wood has been burned down to carbon. Those pores not only hold nutrients which otherwise would have run off and disappeared in the heavy rainfalls of the Amazon, but they also hold moisture that will come back out during the dry season. And most importantly, the pores in the charcoal are a home for microbes and fungi. In, they colonize inside the charcoal in much higher quantities and saturations than they would in ordinary soil. And so when biochar is added to our fields, fertilizer does not wash away as quickly, so we get more value from the nutrients. The moisture becomes more regulated, and the microbial nature of the soil is enhanced. So that the soils literally grow themselves to productivity, since the microbes and the fungi are the key to all the fertility in soil around our planet. So let's have a look at what I've done over here with biochar. Right here we have a regular Weber brand of charcoal grill. Since I live in a suburban environment, the manufacture of charcoal with a pyrolytic converter in my backyard did not seem like the best idea for good relationships with the city and my neighbors. So I decided to attempt to use some trimmings from my lemon tree in this Weber grill. Since the Weber can be sealed up, it has vents right here so I can control the amount of oxygen that's going in and out of this thing. 
So here I have a uh, reasonably clean burn started using a bunch of lemon wood. Uh, the burn is in my Weber grill and uh, it's reaching the temperature where I'm just about ready to put the lid on top. Okay, here we go. Got the grill shuttered down, all the dampers are closed. Uh, and we're going to continue converting the wood in the grill via pyrolysis into charcoal by burning it under a very low oxygen situation. Should end up with about half of it uh, being charcoal. Um, what we ended up with this morning is really some very nice charcoal that should work, I believe, quite nicely as a biochar additive to my garden soil because the charcoal looks to be uh, pretty high grade. I'm happy with it and it should work in my cornfield. So here I am in the middle of my corn patch. I have uh, dumped the contents of my Weber grill into a, uh, a screener up here on top of two sawhorses right in the middle of the garden. And my intent at this point is to try to reduce the particle size of my charcoal down between one quarter to one half of an inch. So here I've uh, taken a geologist's hammer and uh, I've been pushing the charcoal back and forth over quarter inch mesh here to try to get mostly quarter inch sized particles uh, out of this biochar. Um, it's working fairly well. Uh, this is acceptable if you have a small garden space like I'm working with over here. Otherwise you're going to need something probably a little, a little bigger. Uh, or I suppose you could always start with ground wood to begin with. Uh, chips off the sawmill, uh, chips from the tree trimmers probably. Uh, it's a little dusty. My thought on the process was that uh, uh, wood was far easier to chip once it was charred than it was before it was charred so there'd be less carbon involved in the process. This isn't rocket science folks, this is gardening and so if some of your particles are larger than quarter to half inch I don't hardly see how it's going to matter. They'll gradually reduce in size as they lay in the soil anyway as we cultivate. Uh, so there is the uh, uh, first experiment using the Weber grill in the production of an ancient charcoal form known as biochar uh, and we're making ourselves a terra prieta corn patch right here in Bill's backyard in Fremont. A uh, long way from the Amazon but good information those folks left us. Thanks a lot. Happy gardening. Mm -hmm.